Welcome to Watch Guard's Daily Security Bite. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is expanded federal hacking powers. As of today, December 1st, the federal government in the United States now has more powers to hack computers, presumably to catch more bad guys. Today, something called Rule 41 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure got an update. And this update essentially allows uh, feds like the FBI to get one court warrant to hack many different computers around the world in certain cases. Previously, in order for governments to use the their network intrusion tools to hack suspects, they would have to get a warrant from a judge. And if these computers were in different states in the United States or even sometimes around the world because they were using VPN or anonymizing services like Tor, uh, the federal government would have to get many different warrants from many different judges to access different devices. Now apparently, authorities like the FBI can get one warrant from one judge that will give him power to hack a number of different computers all over the US and sometimes the world. Now some of the arguments for having this type of power is to allow the authorities to track down bot herders, the people that run botnets. Often these hackers actually are hiding behind their victims and using their victims to anonymize them. On top of that there's legitimate services like uh, VPN networks to encrypt your traffic or anonymizing services like Tor that good guys can use for privacy reasons but also allow bad guys guys to hide as well. And basically, uh, the federal government in the United States says they need more expanded power to be able to catch criminals using these services. Now, the other side of this equation is privacy. There is, of course, good reasons to use VPN servers and good reasons to anonymize yourself. This update that could allow governments to hack many computers that go beyond uh, just one suspect of one computer in a state can be somewhat concerning for people that push for privacy. On top of that, if you're just a victim of a botnet and the FBI is doing a second hack onto your computer, that could pose problems. You know, just an innocent person in, I don't know, Idaho having their computer hacked just so the FBI can track down bad guys may not be the best thing. Finally, if you're a security person, you know that many of the ways that we hack computers today deal with memory corruption vulnerabilities. And I presume that's the same way authorities hack computers too. In any case, exploiting these memory corruption vulnerabilities isn't always a stable process. There are certain vulnerabilities that work sometimes but can also crash computers. So imagine a botnet infecting a hospital's computer, the FBI getting a warrant to hack victims of the botnet, and then suddenly them accidentally crashing computers. Long story short, there's a lot of factors here. In any case, whether or not you think this is a good thing or a bad thing, it has gone into effect today. By the way, while we're talking about this, in the UK, they just had a snoopers charter pass, which is basically an update to some of their rules where if an ISP uh, implements some new mechanism that adds more encryption, the government in the UK can actually tell that ISP that they need to circumvent it or get rid of it. So it's essentially encryption backdoor capability in the UK. So it's not just the US that are starting to get much more aggressive with these laws that on one hand could catch more bad guys guys, but on the other hand have very major privacy implications for all citizens around the world. In any case, a very interesting story. And while I do think governments do need tools to catch bad guys, I think any government giving overly permissive hacking powers is a dangerous precedence. In any case, that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.